There we go. All right, welcome back. Sorry, they didn't... I, I said I was ready, and then it was just we went into the game. I was like, oh, crap, oh, crap, I didn't push any of the buttons. But welcome back. Every time I think I start my streams, I think it's just, like, in, like, a crazy panic. Like, oh, welcome back. I'm Bahamut, your caster. But um, I am Bahamut, your caster. We are in the chair league. Excuse me, I wasn't clicking the game. I didn't not, I didn't hear any audio. Um, we're in the chair league, Division 2 finals for this season. Tuesday night hots for Division 2. This is exciting. I mean, they're burning through the draft. And I also got a... When I got into the lobby, I got a message that said, we're going to give you some games to cast. So I am absolutely ecstatic about this. <clears throat> so just to, just to open this up, we have Crod 6 on the, so on the left-hand side, and we have 6 degrees on the right. Now, these guys are just burning through draft. I can't even start to literally even talk about it. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, my God. Okay. So... Grayman's going to be picked up with Rhaegar. I actually really like the combination that they're currently running on the side of six degrees. Um, so I just want to make sure that everything is currently up and running correctly. Yes, yes, yes. All those names match. Okay. Okay, so we can focus on the draft. We have everything all set, I believe, in the, in the game currently. So, whew. They burned through those initial picks very quickly. Now the question is... Hmm. Ban wise, they're gonna. So they have Dahaka solo laner. Greymane's gonna be running probably in bottom, I would assume. I like a Stitches on Towers of Doom, but Diablo has been pretty popular lately, and Diablo works well in the fight. So I would honestly lean on a Diablo here, and then maybe they could go to, like, a Kale Fuzad? Hmm. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what they'd be going into, so maybe the ban-wise. And it looks like they're going to go for that Mage Ban, so they're going to get rid of the Leeming Lee Poke. So I guess, yeah, no, that, that, that absolutely is perfect, because realistically, the draft on the side of 6 Degrees would probably go in the direction of a tank mage at this point it would really round up their draft it's it's it, it would be it's seemingly very standard especially for towers of doom it's nothing out of the ordinary now they could throw in a vikings like we you never know both teams could you know because it's a phenomenal pick on this map just like asmodan or or abathur which speaking of on the side of cron six i mean they could go into an abathur here what do you pick up with this as well they're gonna need a healer actually ooh, Ariel pairs well better with Gul'dan Vala, but Lieutenant Morales is a pretty good pickup, too. I just really enjoy the idea of Lieutenant Morales. Beard, hand metal shirt on. Power Glove shirt. Ooh. Goose, I Goose Island is very good. I have to I have to compliment you. Kendo Hots. It's a very good beer choice. I have just been drinking cheap beer all week because... Six versus six. Ex no, it's, it's you know what's so, so funny? Uh, one of the members of, I believe, like, Cron Six actually pointed out the fact that uh, both teams have six in their name. But they're going to go to the Garrosh Brightwing here. So they go into the global aspect for Brightwing. I like the Garrosh for the repositioning. I think those picks are pretty strong. I just think the, the Ariel, it, it just... It lends a little bit more sustain towards these fight, and then honestly, like you could even swap out the Garrosh for an ETC. That might, cause he, cause like overall, like if you if you swapped out the Brightwing for an Ariel, and you swapped out the Garrosh for an ETC, like both of them have like you would literally like never have to leave except for the fact for Mana maybe for Vala. But at this point, we're gonna get the ETC on the side of. Six degrees and Jaina also. Ooh. So there's as as I was saying before, they're gonna go into that tank mage. It's just a very um, well-rounded, standardized comp. I mean, they have a really good global for their solo lane. They've got a really good dive for their fight. They've got an extremely good mage um, from the back line to be doing a, a ton of damage. I really like the the draft on the side of um, six degrees is very strong, but. At the same time, the Gul'dan Poke is going to be very powerful. Vala for the follow-up damage, and the Brightwing Polymorph is going to really hurt that Greymane. 
As well as, I mean, it's going to kind of help out against if... I don't think ETC will go Mosh. I think he'd lean more towards stage dive, especially on a map like this. Actually, technically on the side, they don't have their solo laner. Uh, they could go into Malfi. Ooh. Who's your solo laner? You're not going to put Gul'dan by himself. I don't know why Vala would be. Hmm. That's interesting. Either way, we are going to be getting into this game. I'm so excited, and I hope you all are too. Please, tweet it out, tell your friends, come by, swing by, grab a beer. It's Chair League Division 2 Finals. On the left-hand side, we have Kron6 with Ding on Anubrak, Lazy French on Garrosh, T Wong on Vala, Mark on Brightwing, and Koza on Ghoul Dan. On the right-hand side, we have Six Degrees with Pierce on ETC, Mer Mercury on Greymane, uh, Plopian on Dahaka, Rufio on Rhaegar, and Ooh, I didn't get to look at it long enough, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually stare at your name. Antonash? Antonash. I'm going to go with Antonash for this game. Uh, please correct me in Twitch chat if I'm wrong. Drawn. Either way, let's go ahead and take a quick peek at some of these other ones. We're actually, Jane is going to be going into the Fingers of Frost. Typically, we see out of... Uh, Jaina typically has a Ice Lance build that we see, but this is interesting. This is a change. Vala going into the hot pursuit is pretty much standard for her. Nothing too out of the ordinary for these teams. But we do have the meat in the middle from both. A little bit of posturing in this bush on the side. Kron 6. And at this point, they're just going to play safe. There is a pull in on Jaina. Antonash is going to just, just back off right away. There is a stun out from Ding there. Mercury gonna go ahead and just start the solo lane and bottom. We're gonna have Greymane go or Greymane. I just I was just down there. Uh Plovian will be in the top lane and actually T they're gonna dedicate three man to this top. Now Grant and Mark can Z at any point. Are they gonna do rotations between mid and top? Okay. They're gonna leave Koza versus Antonash, but they could potentially go in for a flank here. Looks like that will be scattered out right away. Pierce gonna go ahead and rotate up here as well as Rufio. Definitely just going to try and make sure that they keep their, their Jaina alive. No early game deaths. I mean, at this point, it's not going to be a crazy amount of experience shifting, you know, in game. But here's the thing that I want to note. These rotations, they've missed out currently on about, uh, I would say maybe two or three waves. Two sounds a little bit, uh, two sounds realistic. Um, but you can see already, there's, there's already starting to be a level gap. And if they do continue to make these rotations, it's actually going to be... Um, hindering their team quite a bit. They actually go ahead and put their Gul'dan into the top lane, putting that three man in, in mid. It looks like they're just trying to figure out their laning situation. But currently, though, in bottom lane, Ding is just getting pushed in quite a bit. We'll play safe by the gates, but we currently have this three altar phase popping up. We're going to go ahead and try and get a peek on all this. Now, Ding is going to be taking quite a bit of damage. We'll have to utilize his dig to get out. And it looks like just looking at the mini-map, we are going to have a few members on the left-hand side. Actually, Brightwing's going to go ahead. Mark's going to come straight down to this. They're going to go ahead and give up their kind of their safe one. Gul'dan will rotate over there. It looks like there's a small engage. Garrosh throwing one of the members over the wall. But at this point, they're just kind of delaying. Gar uh, Gul'dan could get this, but this could be a kill onto Lazy French. They're actually starting to focus onto T-Wong. Lazy French, though, getting blasted back by Pierce. And that will be the first kill of the game going over to 6 degrees. Now, it looks like no one's... Oh, okay, so Kron6, uh, Gul'dan did pick up that first one. Dahaka will d dig down here. Dig will be in a position. Okay, he almost got tongue. Oh, he actually still will get tongue. He's going to get pulled back. The Looks like ETC went ahead and picked up the right-hand side, so it's 36 to 36. But at the same time, there's a little bit of a level difference. There are fours on the side. Okay, that's even now. They went down to the bottom lane to soak over here a little bit. But making sure, I mean, e like even to, like even level four, it still it still matters. We actually currently have a channel from Antonosh. We have a huge amount of damage going out on Davala, and that will be another kill going over to six degrees. 
They're going to have to back off at this point with the Vala being dead. They don't really have really good poke besides Koza, and he doesn't want to be sacrificing himself. So this is going to be another four shots going over to the core of Kron 6, and they are kind of posturing up a little bit for this camp. Koza looked like he was kind of seeing if they were there. Pierce already scouting out, so I'm wondering if they're going to go for this one. Looks like Rufy already left. The retreat's already called out, but this is Pierce getting power slid through. Okay, power slide through ding. They're going to go ahead and pick up the camp themselves, and it looks like they will just uh, start to push up these lanes evenly. Mercury going to be able to get a little bit more push on top of the Dehak, or the Anubarak. Um, but once the, the wave comes in and we have Gul'dan to clear this out, they might actually get this pushed up. Uh, either way, though, in top, we're just going to peek up here really quickly. It looks like we're going to have Plobian versus T. Wong. This is going to be a pretty even match up. T. Wong having a little bit of good wave clear in the range for it, so stay away from Dahaka, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Try and keep an eye out there and see if there is a small engagement just based on the health bars. Actually, Dahaka taking quite a bit of damage, but... Um, actually, do they? Because I do see Lazy French rotating up here. Do they go for the chase? They're currently going for it. There could be a pull. No, the Burrow's there. They do get away. Now, in mid, though, we do have quite a bit of a fight. Koza getting body blocked by the ETC. He did get Polymorph for the last second. Ooh, he does get the heal off of him. Rufio trying to dive in, getting a little bit more damage, but unfortunately, that is not going to be yielding the kill that I think they're looking for. Antonok, thank you. It's just, I look at everything phonetically, and I'm so glad that you, uh, you, you told me. Thank you so much. So much. Kendo, thank you so much. Um, Antonov. Alrighty. Uh, we do have Plobian coming down here. He will actually get the tongue onto Garrish here. Lazy French taking quite a bit of damage. There isn't a follow-up tongue, but there is a black spat from Pierce. Cleanses onto him, but he is, get, he is killed here. We do have a body block onto Mark. There is a complete disengage, though. They rotate out, and they just go ahead and use Pierce as as the kind of the vision. So they go ahead and get this single altar phase. The Nubrak is down here. Does get the delay. But at this point, they're going to have to go ahead and just kind of just back off. We do have a blink up into top lane. T1 falling so low. Plobian almost getting the kill on the Vala there. Mark coming up here, though, making sure that doesn't happen as well as just getting the clear against the Dahaka. Now, in this bottom lane, Ding going to potentially... He's, okay, so he has the dig. He's fine. These teams are playing just these. They're playing these lanes really well. Um, there ha, there have been a couple early game kills, but at this point they've just been playing really safe here. But at this point we do have a rotation in from a few of the members, but they're just backing off on the side of Cron Six. They don't want to fight at this point. Uh, bottom lane, we're actually gonna have Antonog dying, and I missed it by a split second. They do still have this push in to the lane, so they can you know they still have that benefit. Pierce will be here to make sure that kind of gets a little bit of value. Looks like we have Lazy French to actually come down and say, no thanks, no. We're going we're gonna to make sure this doesn't get any value. You're going to have to back off and just kind of get the, the lane soak. You don't get any extra towers from this. Uh, the one thing, let's see. We actually have a do We do have a rotation from Rufio and Mercury. Koza, I think they do see this, though. So they're going to be able to back off and play this safe. Not a big deal at all. We do get this camp picked up here. The altar phase should altar phase should be starting quite soon. We do have a small engagement in this mid lane, but it's just it's just wave clear at this point. These these teams are playing extremely safe because mostly the on the side of of six degrees they have their tens. So Cron Six, you, you see they're pay, they're playing this very defensive manner. They don't want to go out too far. They don't want to get caught out by you know because they can't see everyone on map currently. Um, the majority of the team is only showing their ETC and maybe their gray main. Especially during this this top ooh, ooh sorry about that. Uh, during this top altar phase, um, Newbrack will have to rotate here, so he's gonna try and just get this wave in the bottom just pushed over a little bit more. Currently, do have the Z in from Brightwing. Mark will be here. Pierce looks like he's just disengaging from the middle, and it looks like we actually have a dive in from Rufio. Quite a bit of damage going out. A huge ring across onto a few of the members. There is the taunt and the fear. Oh my god, one of the web graphics is out onto one of the members. ETC will be falling here, but that will be channeled on the right hand side by Antonok, I do believe. And we do have Mercury falling extremely low right away. He's going to get pulled back by Garrosh, and that is going to be a trade on damage, but at the same time, they do get two kills, so that really pulls them back into this game on the side of 
Cron 6. They're going to go ahead and it looks like they're going to sneak away at this camp with the two members dead. The ETC actually goes ahead and uses the stage dive. But this is still only a 2v4. Rhaegar had to take the... He took a long rotation out of that. So they go ahead and give this over. And this is a complete different dynamic shift on the side of Cron 6. I mean, these guys are absolutely... They got their 10s and they just swapped this game around 100%. These guys have just been pushing in so extremely hard and playing very aggressively too. So just really quickly, to, while we have this kind of laning phase, uh, looking up at some of the tal at some of the level 10s, doesn't look like anything out of the ordinary. Horrify from Gul'dan. We have Emerald Wind from the Brightwing. I apologize for missing that kill. We actually have a huge ring of frost. Actually, just just for the Anubarak. I don't know why. Like every time I, I I always say huge ring of frost, but that's just mostly because like it's it lands in a huge area, so it's just like it's just like well, it takes up a lot of space. It's a huge ring of frost. Um, and actually, they're starting to they're really starting to pressure this bottom. So uh, that pressure that I was talking about inside of 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 Cron Six, I mean, it's it's kind of shifted at this point. I mean, these guys are just. They're going back and forth, <laughs> realistically. So they go ahead and trade out. They get this bottom keep. Or, excuse me, it's a fort at this point. Um, Dahaka will be pushing up this t mid lane a little bit. Do have 13 is just on the cusp for Kron 6. We actually get a toss over the wall on the Pierce. I don't think he has Crowd Surfer. Lazy French taking so much damage. A huge taunt onto a couple of the members. The Brightwing pushes them away. The Pier also separating a few of the members away. Pierce taking so much damage because the power slide out. He will be fine, but at this point, Ding is taking so much damage from some of the members. Antonov is taking a so low. Looks like he will get the chain heal at the slows. Okay, he will be able to get out of there. But at this point, we still have an altar that just popped into bottom. Garrosh is dead. It really depends on who postures there first. I mean, potentially... Oh, Plobian. Yeah, they get this. Um, they try and actually... They try and burn this out quick enough so that the five shots do not hit, but they actually do connect. So that's going to be 19 to 32. And this is a really strong game on the side of... Six degrees. Antonok just... The damage that he's just putting out. And he's getting away with so much. Like, there's so many times that I'm seeing him get so low. But at this point, we do have a dive in from Ding. Antonok actually going to get caught out. Pulled in, thrown over. We do have Pierce through here. There's a ring of frost into a couple of members. I believe there is the cleanse under a few of them. The taunt is there as well. Pierce doing so much to keep Antonok alive. We do have Pulbean coming in, though, at this point. Should be able to get onto Koza. Looks like they're going to go ahead and dive onto Brightwing. Mark and die as well as Garrosh. And we do have a Nubrek falling as well. Koza being chased at this point. The Gilnaz cocktail hitting. And just that stage dive in completely just changed that the pacing of that of that fight. As well as Dehaka Burroughs is separated. I mean, a really strong play on the side of six degrees. Um, but at this point, Koz is doing the extremely is doing the best thing they can do. He's just gonna stack a little bit more with some of his talents. Actually gonna utilize fear. Hmm. That was a little bit early of a burst. I, I honestly I don't I don't see why it was used. Um, you just put yourself on a on a seventy second cooldown. I'm just confused, actually. Got it. Excuse me, is it seventy or eighty? No, it's eighty. I'm... Uh, we but we do currently have so the middle point popping up is basically it's a turning point in the game where the experience is is changed over and forts now are worth keep value, but they also do keep damage. And so this is the point of the game, like when you typically actually do see comebacks. Mostly because of the fact that, like, if they can get one or two picks off of, you know, the separation. Because this is the point of the game where a lot of the members have to split to try and get as much as they can with the... But, excuse me, never mind. Lazy French is going to be getting quite a bit of damage. The web rep does go out. They're currently going to try and clear it out. Rufio diving in, trying to help the member of his team. Getting taunted, taking so much damage. The sappers will dive in, but it's not going to kill it. Pierce going to get the knockback, and they're going to go ahead and just posture up. It looks like Vala will go ahead and get the bottom point. So they're going to get at least four shots over. Looks like... I'm just going to pull down the talents currently because this is just a huge engagement. So it currently is just traded over. Koza going to be the first one to die during this engagement. We actually have the pushback 
There's a Ring of Frost, but it doesn't connect onto any of the members. The stage dive in is there. They actually get the pushback on a Lazy French. This is going to be Garrosh dying here. T1 going to get chased at this point by Greymane and Rufio, but it looks like they're going to back off at this point, and they're going to get this other Bell Tower also. And they've just been showing dominance out of this game. Six Degrees have just been... They picked a draft that worked extremely well on this map. They had a tank that could basically rotate as a global member. Um, they had a bruiser, obviously, and someone who can really set up a lot for the... for the um, A lot of good ganks in, in, in fights. Just... Overall, the draft from Six Degrees was just really, really strong for this map. And it's it's starting to show. And they're, they're really putting... Cron 6 through the paces because of the fact that these guys just... They drafted something that works so well. They have good lane clear. They have good fight. They have good range damage. They have good initiation. They have good disengage. Like, there's just so many tools on the side of, of 6 Degrees. And, and like, not to say that on, this, on Cron 6, like, they have a bad draft or anything at all. Like, I mean, they have Horrify for disengage and World Win, but I just... The way that they've been utilizing their abilities is just... It seems like there's a little bit of a discommunication on, on the team members. I mean, there's WebRat coming out. And, and horrifies at the same time, and taunts is on top of that. So it's just, um, it, I think it's just, just maybe there's a little bit of, of excitement. You know, it is the finals and everything. People are, you know, a little bit nervous. But it's just, if they can just kind of like, you know, take a breather and pace themselves a little bit, you know, they can definitely start to, it is, it's a 7-28 to 28 game, I understand that, but there is still a comeback factor in this game. If you do start to get these rotations, they're starting, you know, if they get a little bit too cocky and they start fighting under your towers, and you do get a pick maybe onto the ETC, but he will get cleansed and slide away. Um, that's just what I'm talking about, though. Like, there, there is still a possibility for, you know, some sort of uh, turnaround. But at the same time, I do have to say, top lane has been stacked up. Dahak is going to go ahead and clear up this camp. He probably is Burrow at this point. Um, 20s are really close on the side of uh, 6 degrees. So just to make sure that they don't completely... I mean, it... They get a little experience off of this, but unfortunately it was a little bit of a waste of time. Because it doesn't matter if they converted one or the other. If they get both, it's still just going to be... Ooh, unfortunately, it was a horrifying that did not connect. They do actually get one of these turned over. Cleanses out onto T1. He actually will get killed by the Dahaka here. We do have the Polymorph onto the ETC. Atan is out onto a couple of Nora's. The Ancestral Healing does connect onto Pierce. We do have Plobian just diving in so deep. Lazy French is actually going to get killed by Greymane before ETC dives down onto some of the members. They get the drag onto Croza. They do get the kill onto Ding as well, potentially, but Pierce is falling extremely low. The one thing I want to note during all this is that Dahaka was channeling this, so it looks like this is going to be the first game going over to 6 degrees. GG, well played. Oh me, oh my. Whew. What what an amazing first game. I mean, that was that was just the back and forth between those two teams was absolutely phenomenal. Um let me go ahead and just uh update the winner of the game. So we can go to round number two. And they I think they're setting up map and everything, so at this point I think I'm just kinda they're calling out Dragonshire, so uh, I'll wait a couple seconds see if they want me to make them. Apologize, if they want me to make the map, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and at least update the stream assets because I do know that they are requesting a specific next map. Oh, all right. Well, we don't get to look at the stats. I apologize. We're gonna go into our hideaway the the game screen. Um, let me join into the lobby here and start in round number two. I mean, these guys they want to get into these games. They are pumped. Looks like, all right, oh, they're going to throw me in the spectator. Never mind. I was hoping for a split second. I was like, oh, my dreams, my admirations. I can get into this game. No. I didn't give them the link, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop that in there. Okay. Sorry, I'm just, I just, I'm looking at some of the, okay, 
<laughs> I, hey, he's he's on the roster. So. Um. Yep. Yeah, no, everything checks out. I'm going to let them know that I am ready as well. And I'm going to hover my draft button because I do not want to miss the intro for game number two in two. Oh, well. But no, just everyone, by the way, thank you so much for swinging by for, for watching the games. I'm absolutely so ecstatic to be here and, and casting the Division Two finals for Chair League. This is just, I'm absolutely ecstatic. I bet money on six degrees wins. Brandon HS. Okay. All right. How much money? How much how much are we talking here? Who was the MVP of that game? I just tuned in. Um ba, 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 ba. oh <laughs> right as we go in. Um MVP of the last game. I honestly have to say it's Dahaka. The macro game from Dahaka can completely just it, it it's it's a lot like an avatar like an avatar can be the devastation or 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 the best aspect of your team and and like because dahaka can kind of be in the same aspect because of the same factor like if he doesn't win the solo lane it's you know he's not really getting that experience and i mean well you don't have to win the solo lane but if he's just uh if he's not getting the soak and he's like dying too much that's what i mean by by win the solo lane if he's not getting those aspects and making sure that he's rotating like if he needs to make sure that if he's in the top lane and the team is engaging 4v5, that he knows when to watch on the map to go in for that flank position, for that for that tongue onto the back lane member so that they can the rest of the team can go in for the engage. So that's what I'm saying. Like, Dahaka is the MVP, and and the Dahaka Plobian, I believe, who played it, that was so strong, that game. So, and, and typically, like, a good Dahaka will not carry a team but it really dictates a lot of the fights because he does he gets in that back line and that sets up so much for the team because once the back line is harassed and you start to peel the members away from each other i mean you you peel the members away so then you can literally just run into whoever comes you know runs away and we're actually going to see a dahaka ah who i didn't do the one thing now i asked them so this is the thing i asked crowd six and uh six degrees to if if they could remember and you know this is just i didn't check um if they can make sure that they stay left and right side so blue and red oh, oh alex Straza, thank you so much for the follow i appreciate it um ooh. abathur no okay they're gonna go gul'dan i'm assuming they're same side but we'll see um so far the draft actually looks reverse it, I would assume, based on the draft, uh, that left side would be Crowd Six. But either way, we're gonna no, we're gonna we're gonna say Crowd Six is on the right, and I apologize. I'm sorry. Crowd Six is on the left. Six degrees is on the right. It's been a long day for me. I played I played a little too much Alien Isolation earlier, and I got a little too freaked out. Um, just gotta like slow down a little bit. You bet five dollars. All right. Okay, five dollars. That's a fair bet. Unfortunately, they are going to go ahead. Well, not unfortunately. They're going to go ahead and pick up Tahaka. I actually think that he is extremely strong on this map. Um, the one thing that I would actually like to see coming out of their draft at this point is maybe they go ahead and pick up a the gray main and maybe. Ooh, okay, I was going to say Rhaegar, but I like the Vala. Vala is extremely good here too. Um. But I want to make sure that they don't kind of suffocate themselves in some sort of range. Ooh, they could go into a hyper carry too. Could go into a solo hyper carry Vala. Oh, completely. I usually when there's a like when there's a there's a specific ban like that because Alarak like he's not bad on Towers of Doom, but you don't typically. I, I mean, well, no, you do see him on Towers of Doom. Um. I don't know. It just it didn't seem like one of those things that seemed like a, a major threat on that map. I mean, Dahaka is typically. Oh no! I have to sn I have to like sneeze, but it's right there. Pickles, mayonnaise, oju sauce. I don't, I don't know. Oju sauce. I don't know. Either way. Okay, we got the sneeze out. Either way, 
We're going to go ahead and have an Arthas ban, so they're going to make sure that they get rid of that main tank, which would actually pair well with that Vala Rhaegar, but I like the Grey Main Garrosh. That's a pretty terrifying draft on the side of Six Degrees. It's a lot of damage. The hunting from Illidan, that gives them a global. The repositioning from Garrosh can completely help them get into that back line, open up the fight for Greymane, as well as get some of the damage into the back line from Gul'dan. I mean, the Felflame, it does, well, no, it does pass through, so it's, I don't know, I just, I think, it's a Garrosh is a strong pickup here. Now, Dragonshire, how do you respond to that? Now, Joanna is a really strong, Brandon HS, thank you so much. I appreciate the follow. So ETC is available. I think that now Tassadar, I, I okay. So this is this is basically a solo hyper carry Vala. That's going to be paired well with the Tassadar. Rhaegar will probably be hanging out with Varian for most of the game, and then Dahaka can solo lane. So I kind of like this. They're they're kind of doing like a one two two on the side of Kron Six. I would assume. They can rotate the Varian Rhaegar into the bottom lane, or Varian can just stay mid and rotate the Rhaegar into there for the three man and bottom. Keep your Varian mid for the Soak, as well as potential Dragonite pickup. Though, granted, Tassadar might be your, your optimal Dragonite. Six Degrees is in red. Okay, thank you so much. Oh. So it looks like we're having... So there's there's specific heroes on either... So it looks like they're, they're banning out, you know... Some people like to play Sonya a lot, and some people like to play Alarak a lot. Okay. So they're making sure that they don't they don't get those. But looks like we're gonna be going into this matchup. I am ecstatic. Game number two, Dragonshire, Cron 6 versus 6 Degrees. So on the left hand side, we are gonna be having Cron 6 with Ding on Dahaka, Lazy French on Varian, Koza on Tassadar, T Wong on Vala, and Mark on Rhaegar. On the right hand side, we are gonna have six degrees with Mercury on Gul'dan, Plobian on Illidan, Rufio on Lucio. A, f a frickin' bear on the Garrosh, and Antonok on Greymane. Once again, shout out to Twitch Chat for helping me pronounce the team names that I am so horribly good. Pickles Mayonnaise, is that same? So, no, like, if you've ever heard, so Brandon HS, like, if you've ever heard, if someone's like, oh, man, I gotta sneeze, and, like, they start to do the sneeze face, if you yell, like, Pickles or Mayonnaise, or, like, you yell just something pretty much random to them, most of the time, it just, they can't sneeze at that point. They just, it goes away. So I was trying to do it to myself, and it worked out. I don't know how. Don't ask me. Uh, but it does. So instead of having to, like, mute my mic and, like, dip out of frame or something, then it was a little bit better just for me to shout out random toppings. To... But either way, we're going to get into this match. We'll focus on this first. Um, looks like we're going to have Varian probably going into the taunt build here. Just a little indicative of his first pick um, as well as being you know based on the draft like he would be the main tank we actually have a pull in from a freaking bear um we do have ding taking quite a bit of damage there is the pull on to antonok here but it looks like they get the clean disengage they are getting pushed into their towers at this point another pull on to ding there is actually the kill from lucio and that is going to be the first kill going over to six degrees now they are going to rotate the bottom and just in top really quick, we have Plobian going up against Lazy French, and this is going to be a, a, an easy matchup for Plobian. Um, just because of the fact that he can slap E and then just, you know, sit there and do as much damage as he wants. So we'll, we'll try and we'll try and monitor the health bars as best as we can. Um, but at this point, we're just going to be seeing these rotations out of the two teams between mid and bottom, kind of, sort of. We actually have Ding in the bottom lane, which is interesting. I would have thought that you would have had the Dahaka going up against the Illidan in top. Um, but at this point, they're going to have the Varian going up against Illidan, and it's, I mean, it's even matchup, but I believe he, he probably is tapped as well by now. Uh, at this point, the Dragonite is available. Looks like they, okay, Lucio will get the disengaged. They do have a pull on their Mercury here, who will be able to get away. No problem. They don't get enough damage on him. Rufio is really close to getting the Dragonite there. They currently have a couple members in this mid lane trying to just make sure this doesn't happen. They get the throw onto Koza, and that will be another kill over to six degrees. 
Antonok will go ahead and pick up the Dragonite. So they start to rotate this Dragonite into, I believe, mid. Illidan, I believe, went and tapped his well. So look to see him try and make a lot of push in that top lane. Once they open this gate, I wouldn't be too surprised to see them actually just rotating to bottom. Just realistically, opening up the map is is the main goal of this early Dragonite. It doesn't get a huge lot of value, but we actually have a huge pull on the Mercury. Falling extremely low. Do they get the extra kill? T Wong actually gets kicked away. Any sort of damage that he could have provided would have been a kill on the Mercury. There was a quick kill, kick from Antonok there. And unfortunately, they don't get the follow-up kill. Now, in top lane, just really quickly, we have Koza versus up up against Plobian. That means that they only have their healer, their Rhaegar, in the bottom lane. Do you have one of the members getting kicked away, Varian, I believe? But they're going to go ahead and they're just going to open up this mid lane. They're going to go ahead and get the fort, get the well, the kick on the ding there. But at this point, it looks like they get the... No, they're not going to get the fourth. We have the Antonok trying to get out. He's going to be taking a little bit of damage, but it will be a disengage. And they actually get the destruction onto the fort. Now, that's mid lane opened up. Just mid lane. We still have so much. Should have been to Hakka top. No, I completely agree. I... The Hakka should have been top that entire time. But at this point, it looks like we do have a little bit of... Oh, there is the dig, but he does actually put himself out of position. There is They do get the throw onto him. Getting body blocked by a couple of the members here. Rufio just making sure that he doesn't really get the clean... He doesn't get any sort of disengage through his safe route. They get the kill onto him. They go ahead and ping for this camp, and they might be stealing this away. I don't know if they can scout this out or even defend it realistically. Now, really quick in the top lane, they did dedicate two members... Plobian falling so low, he will not be getting killed. Kozen not having that extra, um, oh god, what is the name of the talent, or the ability? Oh, I'm drawing a blank. Psionic ship? No, that's the, either way, uh, he didn't have, he didn't have another ranged attack to kill him with. A freaking bear trying to pull one of the members here, but it will not happen. Kozen rotating down. We currently have the altar starting up in the next 20 or so seconds. Lazy French will be backing off. Antonok will go ahead and rotate into the lane. Currently, Plobian is just going to go ahead and just skip over Lazy French and start working on this tower. Just no respect. I guess now that the now that the Tassadar is not here, he's just ignoring Lazy French completely. Um... Working down the gate, he doesn't even care at this point, since the Tassadar has not been in the top lane. Uh, at this point, we do have Vala. T1 currently trying to clear up this lane. There's a little bit of a dive from Rufio and Antonok, but they already posture for it. Unfortunately, we do not have Illidan going in for that yet. I believe he just went back to tap well. Does see Lazy French going in on this. And let's see if we, we have just have a little bit of a 1v1. There is a Burrow in from Dahaka at this point. Ding is up here. Plobian does see that he is coming, so he goes ahead and gets a disengage. Dives onto the lane, and I believe he should be able to get out of this. Now, at the same time, they do have the channel for a few seconds into this mid lane, but there will not be anyone available because currently the four-man is up against the other four-man in bottom lane. Or, excuse me, the three-man is up against the four-man four in bottom lane. They're going to work down this wall, which is extremely important for this map, mostly because of the fact... Oh, they get a huge toss on the T-Wong here. There's no disengage. That's going to be a kill on the Vala, and they can really start to open this up a little bit more. Um, the big thing that you'll see a lot of teams do here is they'll prioritize the well, and that that, that is a important aspect of this map because if you lose your well in the top or bottom lane, um, that is definitely the spot where... You, you know, it keeps you, like, in a solo lane position, that is your pretty much your lifeblood because you have no healing. Um, now, granted, it's Illidan, so he does have kind of the mending mending attacks, but at the same time, if he's getting pushed in by double, you know, double tanks, he, he can't do anything besides just kind of stay safe. They're going to go ahead and lose this well in top lane as well as lose the fort, and, excuse me, uh, Kron6 is going to lose the well, the fort in bottom lane. Well, at the same time, though, they have to play extremely safe on the side of uh, Kron 6 because of the fact they don't have 10s yet. 6 degrees having those 10s, we're going to actually see Hunt in from Illidan. I'm not surprised by that. We have Go for the Throat from Greymane, who's actually posturing in this mid. They're looking to go ahead and try and capture this Dragonite. But unfortunately, they can't do that just yet because every time Plobian goes in for the Dragonite, the Ding rotates up with Lazy French. 
But we have Antonak currently rotating in. Rufio kind of just kind of baiting a little bit the Dahaka. Antonak is also here. Kozo's rotated up at this point. They do get the channel onto it, but there's no one in place for it just yet. A few of the members are rotating in position for it. No one has gone to the top to kind of delay this. We actually have the Illidan going... Oh, no, they're going to go for a little bit of a fight here. Rufio getting a little bit of a splash damage out with the Gilneas Cocktail there on the Koza. I believe I said Rufio. I mean, I mean, uh, Antonov. Uh, Mercury going to rotate in here, going to be getting quite a bit of damage himself. Just speaking of those numbers, let's just go ahead and take a peek at them. We actually have Cool Dan just doing 22,000 in, in here damage completely just... Just the, the damage output from Golden is, is terrifying in this game so far. Um, as well, I mean, just the siege damage out from, from Green is, is really powerful as well. So, we currently have a little bit of a fight in this mid lane. We do have a hunt in from Illidan onto that backline. T1 taking quite a bit of damage. The ancestral healing does not connect in time. The break down is used on the side of six degrees. The taunt is there onto a few of the members. You have a freaking bear getting a pull onto one of the members. There is no toss currently, though. We have Phobia getting taunted as well. Force Wall is out for the little bit of a block just to make the disengage harder. And it looks like they will will make this a one for nothing trade and that's gonna be in favor of six degrees they get the oh we actually have a pause okay we have a pause we're gonna go ahead and hide map because we don't want to show map they'll you know they could technically be seeing it but still um but we had someone dc there and it looks like they got pulled in by the force wall oh 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 I just showed beer on stream, but I don't care about that. I'm just, I'm looking at Twitch. I'm just, not Twitch, I'm looking at in-game chat like. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> just, just kill me. Just kill me, baby. I'm ready. I, I absolutely love it. Um, but we just need the reconnect to happen here, and we will be underway shortly. I'm going to go ahead and hover my button here. We should be getting this in any second. See, the unfortunate thing about being in spectator mode is players can't see caster chat. Um, and I do not believe I have any of them on Discord. We're actually going to go right back into this game. I Okay, uh, looks like we're going to be back. Um, unfortunately, okay, so we're just going to go right back into this. It'll be fine. Um, Blizzard, please, please just make it so casters can just talk to team members. Just, just do that. Make it so I can cycle through Observer and all chat. It's not just that one little quality of life thing. Um, but we are back into this game at this point. So we do have uh, tens are achieved on both sides. And I don't think we talked about them any at all. Well, we have some of these just waiting. We actually have a huge force wall here from Tassar. But he's actually going to be thrown over the wall. He's going to use his shift. Koza will be falling here, though. And it looks like with that, they're going to go ahead and try and posture for this dragon. But unfortunately, the bottom lane and the top lane are going to be held over. Antonov taking quite a bit of damage. T1 getting a huge stun into a couple of the members. Going to dive out. We actually have the, we have the hunt in from the Illidan. The ancestor healing is not there in time. Dahaka will burrow into the back lane. Oh, actually, no. He's just going to disengage completely. Pull in on to Mark. The slow is there. And it looks like they get that kill as well. So that's going to be just... I mean, the Tassadar is back at this point. But they are currently chasing Lazy French. Mercury wants this kill. They also get the Dragonite on top of that. Horrify is used just for the kill, and they go ahead and get it. This bottom lane, though, here's the thing. They are positioned perfectly for this bottom lane. So they're just going to stay here. They're going to go ahead and push into this lane. Dragonite's in mid with the Grey main, so they're going to go ahead and get quite a bit of value here. And looks like they get the Disengage. Okay. T1 will get kicked, but I mean at this point they're just I'm just, they're just they're playing kind of safe. Oh, there is a little bit of a force wall out, but unfortunately it does not kind of yield them anything here. They need to play a little bit safe because they're almost there's almost 16s on the side of 
six degrees, and 13s aren't even yet achieved. The ooh, Plobian taking quite a bit of damage. He does get the... I believe he took Friend or Foe early in the game. Level four? Yes. So he had that dive over the, over the wall. So he will be able to get out of there without a problem. Now, at this point, on the side of six degrees, your lanes are pushed up. We have another pause here, potentially coming in. Or at least it's just a hearth from a few of the members. So I apologize to the teams. Um, that's just an unfortunate thing that it, it's something out of my control. Um, okay. Looks like they're just going to go ahead and just keep moving on here. Antonok is going to go ahead and looks like he will start this camp. Um, we do have the camp being currently picked up in top lane from both teams. Looks like Plobian will go ahead and clear that out without a problem. We do have a few of the members from the team rotating potentially up there. They're, it looks like they're just not sure of where they want to be going at this. They're not sure if they want to be going for the fight. It, it'd be Asmodan. Global control as well as uh, it's good macro practice. Um, but we do have uh, rotation from the team. They're going to go ahead and clear this out without a problem. And this is going to be... Bottom lane currently, though, pushed in by four of the members. Like, they are doing quite a good job of just completely forcing rotations out of the team. And at this point, they push up the lane. They're going to all five hearth back. They just need a little bit of damage onto that keep. It's tempting. They get the Gul'dan. He gets the Fell Flame out. Now, this is Dragonite in 16 seconds. We currently have a Force Wall. No follow-up. It looks like they're going to go ahead and clear this out. The keep will stay standing, but at this point, that means that there are going to be catapults currently pushing this mid lane, and that's something they're going to need to address often and very quickly. Uh, we currently have Illidan rotating into the top. He will go ahead and clear up this wave as well as get the... No, he's going to channel first. Uh, but at this point, they're going to dedicate five of their members on the side of Kron 6 for this defense because we're getting into the later game. You know, this is still about... It's like 12, 13 minutes for the Dragon, and it's not extremely powerful. The scaling is there. Um, but at the same time, it's nothing where, you know, it's going to be, you know, game ending now. If they do get a couple picks here, this could be. Now, we, do, we have to dive in from, on Varian. We actually have a huge hunt in from Illidan. T-Wong is the focus of all this damage. He does get the Ancestral Healing time. Double, there's a huge Horrify out that I don't actually think hit anybody. There is actually, the Horrify actually connects there. Looks like we will have a couple of the members disengaging. But at this point, I mean, no one has fallen. We actually do have the Dahaka currently falling in this engagement, though. All right, so that means that Koza, w Koza will be following. We do have the rest of the teams currently chasing after them. Toss is over on the Lazy French. The Rhaegar will be falling. Varian will be falling. T1 is getting chased. And that is the situation that I was just talking about. They get this five-man wipe. They pick up the Dragonite. And I think they're going to walk this thing into core. The GGs are called out, and I believe this is going to be game number two going over to six degrees, and that is going to be Division Two Tuesday Night Chair League Heroes going over to six degrees. Congratulations on your win. Good job.